hi, I'm trying to get <laughs> myself so I can actually see myself and it's not all super glaring. Um, and I'm putting here the link because I'm going to reference it soon. The first time I channeled Jesus, um, because I'm going to mention that in a little bit. He, hold on. Um, hi, Lucia. Okay, here we go. Just adding something and there. Okay. Um, oh, hi, Leanne. So um, I want to talk to you guys. I'm going to try to keep this quick <laughs> because um, I actually have a lot of information to give, but um, I want to run through it super fast so this isn't long and um, tedious for you guys. So first, I'm going to share a little bit of, um, hi, here, hold on. I got to love you guys while I get the chance. You know, one thing we're learning these days, it's all about love. Um, so I'm still here in beautiful San Miguel de Allende in the heart of Mexico. Uh, and um, El Corazón de Mexico. This is uh, not just because we're in central Mexico, but because this is where uh, the earliest cultures settled. This is where all the great artists choose to come and live. This is where, um, you know, the, oh my God, it's so like this morning I was talking with some local artists who are indigenous of here. And I was telling them how I feel like um, I'm gra grateful to them. I feel like it enhances my reputation as someone who uh, gets messages because I'm here. Because over here, you know, the, the it's not even the doors are open. It's just like so open. The live, the living and the dead share a space together, and um, and everyone is very spiritual, very open, very. Um, and they were looking at me going, yes, yes. I'm like, no, you don't get it at home. We need to set sacred space, build the energy and open up and invite like the divine spirits and the protective spirits and the healing spirits and our ancestors come in. And they're like, what? What do you mean? They're not just always there with you all the time. I'm like, no, no, this is very special here. So it's wonderful to be in a place that not only is it so open and commingling, but that's so normal for everyone here. They don't even understand the concept of not being able to chat with your ancestors who passed and talking with spirits. And when I talk with, I can grab anyone off the street here and say, what spirits have been with you through your life? And they'll say, well, when I was a little child, I had, and they'll mention like an animal spirit. I like, you know, they have, they're like, they don't even think twice. It's like saying, uh, you know, what did you study in school? This is normal. So I mentioned this because um, it's awesome. And I just wanted to share with you guys. This is so beautiful here. Um, because we're so far removed here from all, you know, I'm sorry, light is glaring in my face. I'm going to adjust us there, there. Um, life here is so far removed from anything coronavirus or, you know, like people here don't understand what Trump's issue is because everyone here is so lovely and kind and friendly and polite. Um, Although you do see these awesome t-shirts, I'll post a picture in the comments later of like, they're really into the skeletons here. Like there are skeleton spirits who have names and personas and histories that, you know, come down and work with people here. It's not like imaginary, it's real. And they have skeleton spirits who are like flipping off Trump, which is like so fun to see in the store windows. Um, but anyway, now that you all know I'm not a Trump lover, there's a big shock. I want to talk about coronavirus. This is going to be three parts, and I want to run through it fast. Part one is a little bit uh, technological, scientific. 
part two will be a little bit of history with me and messages. And then part three will be like spiritual woo love. Um, and to let you know, um, this is stuff that on Friday, uh, Uma, uh, Bipat, Alexand Uma Alexandra Bipat, and I are going to do a live stream. I have the link to it up in the top there with my description. Um, this is stuff that I feel people should have in your mind before we do our our messages. And hi, Bonnie. I hug you too. Thank you. Um, so technological. Um, I mean, those of you who know me know that my whole life I have seen like people's past lives when I talk with them or, you know, spirits are in the room, whatever. But professionally, my undergraduate degree was in geology, uh, specializing in volcanic geochemistry, uh, especially in non-oxygenated non -oxygenated atmosphere. And, you know, I did some work at Johnson Space Center. So I'm like hard earth science chemistry background. My minor was documentary filmmaking. Um, and then later I went to uh, culinary school. I went to l'Académie de Cuisine, which at that time was the only culinary school in the United States accepted by France and Europe. Um, I worked with some of the top chefs in the world, um, many of whom you wouldn't know their names now, but you know, 20, 30, year, 30 years ago, they were like literally the top in the world. And I was privileged to work on these teams uh you know cooked for many politicians billionaires uh traveled the world cooking for billionaires came a single mom so had to walk away from that and got degrees in uh food science nutrition uh got certifications certified dietary manager um I, proc I taught the uh, courses and proctored exams for food service sanitation. And I went into healthcare facilities and redesigned their food service. The only reason any of that is relevant, <laughs> so you know that when I talk about information gathering, I am seriously information gathering. I'm not doing a fear based statements, I'm, I go out and I collect the actual raw data. Um, I designed food service programs for at-risk client-based groups that um, hospice care, memory care, different areas of cancer, depending on if you're preventing, going through radiation, chemo for whatever recovery, uh, seniors trying to regain bone health, um, you know, all different areas of healthcare, I would go in and work with um, the scientists, not, not just the doctors, but also the medical researchers who were creating all the work that we were, or ga gaining the information that we were building our programs on. So I would design working it down to the molecular level what kind of food in what form with what nutritional value this particular group needs in what manner to counter effect or combat whatever issue i have seen my share of viral outbreaks i have been i'm not going to say in the forefront like i work for world health, world health organization but i have been in facilities where we have been in lockdown um, or preventing lockdown with viral outbreaks. So, oh, look, I have little demon horns. I probably need to get a haircut soon. Um, so um, I mentioned this because I'm not just looking at research now. We're talking, you know, I was a chef for and a cook for 40 years and over 25 of those years were in healthcare. And uh, like I said, I've seen my share of viral outbreaks and worked hard to protect the um, at-risk communities. 
So little preamble there. Here's the thing, a virus is a very primitive life form. Human bodies, very sophisticated life form. It takes a lot of environmental change for a sophisticated human body to evolve. We are seeing some evolution now, rapid evolution with the rise of the neuroatypical youth in response to changes in our planet, changes in lifestyle. However, we're not gonna change overnight. A virus, very primitive, can change rapidly in a very short period of time. So while the viral outbreak, the coronavirus began in China, um, and if you don't know the history of that, it's like, ugh, we'll get in that later. Um, it's now in over 110 countries. Every country it's in is a different physical environment, different air temperature, different moisture content, uh, different, you know, environmental um, bacterias and all of that. So there is approximately 360 genomes in the, uh, you know, in the coronavirus. So when they take it apart and look at it, they're looking at the genomes, they're looking at the structure of it, you know, the molecular structure, you know, even the building blocks for that. So they're looking at markers and they want to see all 360 of these to say, oh, we have now identified the coronavirus. Uh, however, what began in China has now mutated in other parts of the world. So when they are testing for it, they're saying, well, we see some of the genomes, but not all of the genomes and the primary markers are different. So therefore we are not saying this is coronavirus. And if you guys are watching the news, you know what happened. China opened its borders up saying we got it under control. People came into China bringing strains, undiagnosed strains of the coronavirus that had mutated with them to China and reinfected the country. So um, it's, uh, oh, Leanne, I'm so happy to see you too. Um, so I'm mentioning this not because I want to cast fear, but it's important if we're going to heal that we know what's going on, especially those of us who are like energy healers and love-based healers, we need to have a base of knowledge. Um, so, this virus is mutating rapidly, which means it's more difficult to detect and any uh, cure they're getting for it may be effective here, but not over there. The other thing, I have been calling people around the US the last few days going, what the heck is going on? And, uh, you know, not just neighbors, I've been calling, like going in my uh, Rolodex, so to speak, calling people who work for the, uh, you know, the AMA and for, you know, the researchers going, what's going on? And, um, and as we know, there are not enough test kits in the world, much less in the US. So we're finding a lot of cases of people who are self-quarantining because they know absolutely they have the coronavirus, but they're going to the doctor, they're going to the hospital, and they're not being diagnosed with it. Um, one woman said to me, her doctor said, sent her to the hospital. No, her doctor sent her home. She went to the hospital. The hospital sent her home. She got worse, called her doctor. Her doctor sent her to uh, an expert who said to her, yeah, you probably have the coronavirus, but I can't, you, you know, I can't say for certain just by looking at you. We only have limited amount of test kits. We're only giving them to people that we know absolutely will test positive. Otherwise it's a waste of a valuable test kit. So he sent her home. She self-quarantined with no medication, no help, no support, just, uh, neighbors like dropping stuff off in her at her front door if she needs it so she's not in the statistics there are lots of cases like that people who are not in the statistics um 
And, you know, they've now found that the coronavirus can live in the air for hours. So if you have, if you sneeze, someone walking through the air you sneezed in hours later is susceptible. It can live on plastic and metal surfaces for over 24 hours. So thank you, airflow units on airplanes. Good job. So I am saying this because we need to know these, like, please fact check me. Please go in and look at what I'm finding. Go in and look at the number of pneumonia cases and asthma cases that are increasing in your state. And, you know, go ahead and see because they're, they're if the coronavirus is not being diagnosed as coronavirus, it is being diagnosed as mild pneumonia, a flu bug, um, what is it, allergic reactions, um, and asthma. These are the four most common alternative diagnoses. Um, so go ahead and do your own research. Uh, of course, it varies state to state. So I'm mentioning this because um, I have had visions of future Earth, you know, my whole life. You know me, that's the way I am. And I've had visions of a rough time. And then I've had visions of further after that, a very beautiful time. And um, when I woke up Monday morning, the visions of the rough time of future Earth, instead of being on the path ahead, it was like I was in a round room with movies being projected all around me. And it was the rough time I'd always seen in the future right here around me. I was like, oh, okay, uh, that sucks. We're, I guess it's here now. And um, so, and my guide told me to call Uma. She and I had a long chat, which is, what led us to um, Friday. Oh yeah, Mary Ellen, I will tell her that. She and I, uh, sorry to interrupt, but tonight Ursi and I are going out with some artist friends to watch belly dancing and they're gonna do a belly dancing class in a nightclub on a rooftop. So we're gonna be like under the stars in beautiful San Miguel having cocktails or you know, sparkling lemonade for mom and me. Uh, learning how to belly dance from these beautiful local women who incorporate indigenous dance moves with, um, you know, Arabian belly dancing. So, yes. <laughs> um, hi, Beth. So, back to it. Um, things are happening. Things are happening now. Um, so that's the scientific part. Now part two, a little bit of my history. Two years and four months ago, the first time I channeled Jesus, which is, uh, oh, hi Bonnie, we're in uh, San Miguel de Ande in the heart of central Mexico, this beautiful ancient city high up in the mountains. And, um, you know, who knows if the idiot Trump closes uh, the border, then we will be here for a long time. And I'm actually not that stressed about that <laughs> because it's so beautiful here. And um, just very, very, everyone is so kind. Um, so anyway, uh, this December, I think it was December 1st, 2017. I was uh, doing an event where I was channeling the librarians of the Akashic Records. Uh, they wanted to talk with, like the room was packed with healers and some of you may have been there. They wanted to talk about what's coming for earth in the near future and the long future. What is actually the cosmic plan for earth? And what can we do in our daily lives? Like, even if you don't see another person, what can you do in your life to help with healing the planet? Um, and this was the first time I met Dahlia of Crystal Cognizance. And she was one of the few people there that evening who really got the whole vision of the evening. Um, and, and, Oh yeah, Mary Ellen, it is so beautiful here. It's so amazing. Um, 
so I was channeling the librarians, which when I channel the librarians, I know some people when they channel, they completely check out. They're like taken off to a place to nap or something. When I channel, I maintain awareness, but I step out of my body. When I'm with the librarian, since, you know, they pretty much raised me, not just in this life, but in my, you know, uh, oh, hi, Ariel. <laughs> so Dahlia, I was just talking about you, about the time we first met when I was channeling the librarians and Jesus came through. Um, so when I channel the librarians, they're a collective, which means each one maintains their unique persona on their own but they also are one of in total telepathic empathic connection as like one sentient being of unique individual beings so they absorb me into the collective and they were talking about what was coming up for future earth and they actually were talking in detail they were saying he, our planet is one of, I think they said nine planets, eight other planets, nine planets that what are just part of a project, a program, not a project, a program where when each planet reached its fruition and all life became a collective on it, these nine planets that are in different dimensions, different frequencies in this universe, when they join together, um, they would create a portal where say non-physical beings, light beings could come here in this dense environment and be freely living as just like anyone else. And we could go easily to like, it, cre it would create a passageway where all of us can go anywhere without losing ourselves. So, um, and they said, this is the, I think it was the third time that our planet had reached the point where it was ready to join the other two times everything fell apart they said this time it's going ahead as planned no matter what um the question is will we come together and join as a collective through love and global harmony by choice or are we going to take the more difficult path where our world will pretty much fall apart they were talking about plague and pestilence and, you know, massive deaths across the planet and governments breaking down and societies breaking down, revolutions, everything we think is of value will be valueless and people will have to return to earth in order to survive. In the process of doing that, we will become reconnected with earth, with the mandalas of earth, with the frequencies with the animal collectives and then we will rejoin and rise up just like anything in life path you can do it the easy way or the hard way but if you're going forward you're going forward and of course we have all been there many times in our lives so it's a collective process for all of us so here's the thing i'm going to say not dahlia who was like awesome and like aware the whole time uh, or Ariel, as you are here, who owns Crystal Cognizance in Woodbridge. And um, uh, a lot of the people there became very angry at the librarians. They were like screaming at them. And they were saying, there is no way, it's not possible. You know, you guys are talking off the top of your hat. We don't believe you. And they, in order to give proof, they were listing things that were gonna be happening through the next calendar year around the world. They were saying like, next month, send your love to Mexico. Mexico will need it because they will be very shaken. And then the next month there was a massive earthquake in Mexico and they said, please send your love and your loving energy to Japan that will explode and create great pollution there will be fires and pollution and their waters will will die and then they had the uh, nuclear power plant blow up like they predicted events coming up with absolute accuracy everything they predicted happened and then they were saying and in earth this is what's going to happen believe us with what we just told you believe us with what's going to happen people were so angry 
that finally the librarians got frustrated and they said, don't you understand? All it takes is belief, intention from love. If any one of you had full faith in yourself and your abilities with one wish, one thought, you could heal your entire planet in an instant. And there were, um, I'm glad I video recorded it because my eyes were shut and I was like off here on the side with the collective. But in the video, I saw there were people actually standing up waving fists at my body at the librarians. And one person who had to be held back because he wanted to hit me, they were so angry. They're like, it is not possible for one person to heal the planet. And the librarian said, give us a moment. We're going to bring someone through who can explain this to you better than we can. And they left. Uh, so I'm just like, like that. And then Jesus came and stood in front of me and said, may I speak through you? And um, he shared messages that had everyone in tears um even though i was like this talking my shirt was drenched with his tears he's very passionate um and that was something for me because you know i'm a unitarian jew i didn't believe in jesus so uh, but he was so impassioned about it that i got third degree burns all the way down my back during the session um so yeah <laughs> He and I have since learned how to work together without like physically harming my body. Um, so I mention this because everything the librarian said has come to fruition and everything they warned about, about this time and what's happening. Look at that. We have refugees all over the world. We have what 25% oh, of Australia burnt up. Imagine Think of the United States if 20, one quarter of the United States burnt up. You know, we cannot poo poo this. Australia is a continent. It's its own continent. And a quarter of it went up in flames like that. You know, we have um, crazy viruses running rampant. We have people protesting against their governments all over the world. Like everything that the librarians showed me all the visions that I've had since I was a child, they're happening now. And as I said, on Monday, I realized we are now in the middle of the visions that I've always seen way in the future. Um, so now I'm not saying this to fear monger. Again, so if you're like freaking out, don't freak out. We would not be in this if there were not a way through it. Because that is what a life path is. We have our individual life paths. Our planet also has a life path. It is time for us to go forward together. For those of us who heal through love, it is a time for us to face reality with love. Now, you cannot send love where you don't love. There are those I do not love. So I send love where I do love and I don't worry about where I can't love. You know, don't, don't hurt yourself to send love. Invite the love to flow into you and through you so that you are receiving the cosmic love and the cosmic love is going out. Um, watch the very first comment in this. It's from me. It's a little video of when I channeled Jesus and he talked about when he did this. And of course you can read my book, how Jesus planned his life, which I sell for like $6. It's really cheap, uh, because I just want people to be able to read this. Well, Jesus wrote it. I was just his, uh, editor, secretary and editor. Um, so on Friday, like, I want you guys to do your research. And then this Friday, join Uma and me, or if you can't join us Friday, catch it later on her Facebook page and my Facebook page. And I have the link to it up in the description for this live stream. 
join us. Feel welcome to bring your thoughts, your feelings, your questions. Um, you know, I've been reading the messages that the doctors in Italy are sending out. This coronavirus is um, serious. It's the real deal. I've been talking with homeopathic healers on what natural healing abilities do we have? You know, what ingredients should we be making tinctures of? And, um, and, you know, so Friday is the time to discuss, like right now I wanted to say, this is the situation. How are we going to get through this? Um, I have been reaching out to people that I'm hosting in April and May for events, telling them, I think we need to move everything to online, um, that I'm very concerned asking someone to fly from another part of the world to Virginia to then ask like 20, 40, 50 people to be in a closed room together it strikes me that that's not necessarily the healthiest way to spread love and spread information. So, um, you know, I, and then it hit me, oh my God, last December and January, I was driving myself like a maniac to build my online school. And I didn't know why it was like, I was like working seven in the morning to 11 at night, seven days a week, some weeks, just like, getting this online school built and i'm like i don't know why i love teaching at wellness centers i love being on the road and now i'm like i need to be able to provide a safe haven for all of us for you know my wellness teacher friends to have a platform where they can continue their beautiful work and for the rest of us you know like when i'm not teaching i love to study when you know those of you who are teachers, I know you love to study. And those of you who are evolving yourself and looking for help, we need to have it there in a way that's accessible and affordable and keeps us out of our depressions, you know, like all of that. Uh, Lori Lee, oh my God, Lori Lee, I have pictures of dogs that I'm going to post on Facebook that you're going to have to look at. So thank you. I have been, yeah, type 1 diabetes and asthma, you have got to keep yourself in prime health for sure. Um, you know, you guys, you have to look out for yourselves because this virus, it's just going to evolve, evolve, evolve. Every time they say we found a cure for it, it's going to mutate. It's going to evolve. So, And it has up to a 21-day incubation period where you may not show symptoms, but you are infecting others. So, you know, look out for yourselves. And again, I'm not saying this to like make anyone fearsome, just look out for yourselves, do your research. It's all available online. You know, they're saying, uh, if you keep three foot distance between you and other people, then, you know, you're very likely to be very, very clean and clear. You know, if you're going into an area where you're you, where you are going to be shorter with people, you can wear the face masks. I know that they're saying the governments are like, oh, don't wear face masks. Seriously, seriously, obviously, wearing a face mask and eye protection because you have the mucous membranes in your eyes will help protect you from getting what is out there. What I do, uh, Uma. Uh, Alexandra uh, Bipat turned me on to the, um, uh, oh, oh my God, I'm spacing on the name, <laughs> um, the doTERRA uh, refresh. And when I came here to Mexico, I spray, hi Jacinta, I miss you too. I sprayed the inside of my face mask with the doTERRA and then wrapped it around my ears and um, you know, I didn't get sick. Now, there may not have been anyone getting sick on that plane. I don't know. I don't care. But I'm doing that double protection of a face mask that is face mask that is sprayed hardcore with uh, essential oil blends that I know are antiviral, anti-inflammatory. Uh, so, um, you know, think about where your comfort is. Think about 
where your need for support is and then give it to yourself. Um, so like I said, this Friday, um, I have, not, I have been reaching out to Steve Herman, um, who is supposed to come to Virginia at the beginning of April. And we were going to do a couple of events and private sessions in my parents' house. And I said to him, Steve, I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you picked up. You're not coming into my parents' house and hanging out with my beloved parents. I'm a little protective. Also, I don't want you to get sick coming over. And, you know, with all of this, let's do your programs online. And he said, Bonita, that's going to be an interesting challenge. How are we going to teach apportation and ectoplasmic work uh, online? How are we going to teach physical mediumship online? And I said, Steve, this is going to be a fun challenge, but we can do like a one day online event with breaks. So I'll have like an hour of class and then a half hour of break, et cetera. The ectoplasm work is in the, was always supposed to be in the evening, like after dinner time, because you need it to be fairly dark and nighttime is better for that anyway. But um, yeah, yeah. But just imagine if all of us are on Zoom and we're all in fairly dark rooms, like red light low down on the floor is good. And he has us bring ectoplasm in our mouths and then spit it on the floor. Uh, he does this thing where he puts coins in his mouth, coats it with ectoplasm, and then spits them out and they're covered with ectoplasm and glowing. And I'm like, we don't need to be in the same room to do that. We can all be spitting into our own bowls and letting all of our bowls glow and let the screen with all the boxes light up with that. So um, I am determined that our community must remain connected. If it's not safe for us to be in the same room, then it's time for us to connect online and allow us to spread our connection globally. Certainly, the more we, the people of love, wish to give our healing to what's happening on the planet, the more we stay connected, the better. And I think if we go online, it only helps us have the potential to spread the connection even further. Having said that, you guys know my pledge. If I'm teaching classes online, I want them to be affordable. You know, I'm not one of those like, charging a lot. I would rather have a lot of people paying very little each so that we can do this together. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm happy sharing messages for free because we got to connect. You know, money isn't even real. We created money and we empowered money, but it only exists, excuse me, it only exists because we conceive that it does. So any of you that studied spoon bending with me know the moment we say something exists, it exists. The moment we say it doesn't exist, it no longer has any power. I think the time is coming on our planet where things like money, government, government corruption, all of that war are going to stop existing because they will not be the right energy for what our planet will be doing to go forward. Um, I'm going to do a lot of meditating between now and Friday. Not tonight. Tonight I'll be belly dancing on a rooftop. <laughs> but um, I am going to be doing a lot of meditating between now and Friday up in the Akashic Library to talk with the librarians about what messages they want me to share when we meet with Uma on Friday evening, and also learn more about these nine planets. And um, when they talk about the three times uh, humanity has risen, they use the word humanity as the primary life force. One was the age of the dinosaurs. And the dinosaurs were supposed to evolve. They were much more evolved than we give them credit for. Also, there were 
there were multiple evolutions and wipeouts and re-evolutions of the dinosaur life. Uh, if you study your anthropological history, you'll know it wasn't just one age of dinosaurs. There were multiple wow. ages. And each time something happened on the planet, they would come back and re-evolve. Um, the last uh, KT mass extinction was the most horrifying fluke because a meteor hit, if it had hit an hour before or an hour later, it would have been like a local issue. It would not have been a global issue. So, um, so the last KT mass extinction was not supposed to happen and it created all kinds of unnecessary trauma for our planet. When you look at the reptilians, and keep in mind, there's like the, hi Joyce, there's the queen reptilian who is part of the galactic collective. She's like pure white light. The original reptilians were like, just as our guardian angels are for us, they were for the dinosaurs and the dinosaur collectives on planet. So I kind of get why some of the reptilians split off and were angry and like evolved the way they did because they're, they, they were there sending love and light and divine messages and evolving this amazing planet of wonderful beings. They get wiped out and then the little scroungy mammals deep in earth finally come out and evolve to us. Yeah, they're kind of pissed at us. But the white light reptilian queen who's in the galactic collective and i've worked with shamans who are doing this um and i know some of you out there have been helping her set up portals that bring the uh, the naughty reptilians the ones that are trying to destroy humanity uh sending them through a portal directly to her where she's been reclaiming them just as archangel michael reclaims demons to return to wherever they were before they fell um she's doing the same with her team so um so when we all come together that's going to be really awesome because reptilians and humans are going to become one in white light and love uh, white and gold light and love and then we have what people call the second one was the uh, the atlanteans which just to be perfectly clear, they didn't call themselves Atlanteans. The word Atlanteans didn't even come into writing until the 1800s when this like scientist guy created the civilization. Based on um, the island, oh my God, I'm sorry, where's my head? I even wrote a paper on it off of um, Greece that had a volcano that erupted and um, the ash flow from that eruption went worldwide. So any time a geologist is doing a core sample, they will find this layer of ash even at the total opposite end of the planet. And they know that this was that time. Uh, Santorini, the island of Santorini. Now, hi Uma. So everyone, here's Uma that I'll be with. Greece keeps calling me. <laughs> Love Greece. Um, Uma, who's just came and joined us, is going to be with me Friday night doing the live stream that I'm prepping you all for. Um, so when Santorini blew up, here's the thing. The And this is what you guys are going to love. The members of Santorini, the, this, the civilization was advanced to everywhere else on earth or on their communal part, you know, Greece, Italy, all of that, Santorini, far advanced. So um, they would enslave anyone who came too close to their island. When the volcanic eruption hit and most of them died, but others were like scattered around, they were captured as slaves. I mean, what else are you gonna do with a Santorini, Santorinian? floating on a log in the middle of the ocean. You take them in as your slave. And they're all like, oh, I can't believe I'm the slave of this like barbarian Athenians in Santorini. We're so far advanced to anything you ever dreamed of. Let us tell you about what it's like in Santorini. 
So the ancient Greeks wrote about all this and they documented it. So in then the late 1800s, this guy talks about Atlantis. He based it off all of that. So when we talk about the Atlantean age, just to be clear, we are not talking about the island of Santorini. We are talking about an age, uh, some people refer to them as the giant people, the noble ones, the great ones, when people, they were people like us only, oh, here, <laughs> that's right. Um, that's right, Uma. So they were people who were much better than we will ever be except they were so beautiful so awesome so extraordinary and so arrogant that they thought they were better than everyone oh my god we're kind of doing that again now aren't we and they destroyed their own civilization through their arrogance so first there was a dinosaur civilization then there was what we call atlanteans but that was not what they called themselves however we do and then after that came us. So we're like, we're like the, uh, the last case scenario, like, oh my God, everything's falling apart, not happening. We need this ninth planet to happen. Get those ugly little hairy mammals and like bolster them up so they can at least be something. That's us. Of course, uh, many of us who are alive on this planet now did not originate here. We are from other places that are here for the purpose of helping. That doesn't mean we're better than anyone. If you are of human origin or if you're of angelic origin or Lemurian origin or whatever, um, it doesn't matter because we're all in our flesh suits together. And when we're not in our flesh suits, we are beings of pure light. So no one, it's only like humans who ever think in a hierarchy uh, when we're in flesh. When we're out of flesh, there's no hierarchy. We're all, you know, love and light. So um, when Uma and I meet on Friday, my part is gonna start with this. I'm not gonna repeat this information, but the coronavirus is not gonna go away. Um, I've seen visions of it. I'm going to save those for Friday, little teaser there, but because if I get in, it will be a deep dive, but again, we need to share our visions. We need to connect. We need to come together and get through this to help advance our planet, to grow our world. Uh, when we talk on Friday, I also want to hear from you guys and, um, Librarians will come through a little bit, do a little channeling. Uma heads up to you. It won't just be you and me. We'll have our friendly neighborhood bookish collective along. Uh, we'll draw some cards. We'll like do some messages. We'll want your questions. We'll want your thoughts. Um, my feeling is going forward, I'm going to be, I think, stepping back from live in-person programs and going more to live on programs just so I know that we're all being safe and um, but I want to hear what you guys think about that I want to hear like I mean I know I can do programs here in San Miguel because we're very safe here yes Uma um, yeah Sylvia Brown thank you Suzanne Sylvia Brown predicted all of this and Uma was mentioning this to me on Monday um, and I'll admit, I'm a little behind on what people in like the 70s and 80s predicted, like my awesome mom, Ursi Potter, we read all of that then, but, you know, I'm terrible at remembering this stuff. So yeah, I want us to talk about that. Look up Sylvia Brown's predictions. And Umo, who was the other one you were mentioning um, that you said also was talking about this time? There was a, a man who predicted a lot of this. So join us Friday, bring your questions, bring your comments, bring your concerns, bring your visions. And here's the thing, rule of thumb. If you have a vision and your first thought is, oh no, no one wants to hear that. They're gonna think I'm stupid. They're gonna reject me. That's the one that you need to share, okay? Uh, trust me. <laughs> um, 
So uh, yes, yes, Dean Kuntz. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, Dean Kuntz and Sylvia Brown, they've been predicting this and I'm sure if you all can share in comments if there are all of you, if there are other people who have given predictions, if you're welcome to share any video clips that you think are relevant to this. Um, I will keep on with my research on what's happening globally with the coronavirus, and I'll keep on talking with my friends who are actually doing the research, who are, do, who are aware of what's really happening, uh, who are studying you know, the, the virus in a molecular level and who are looking at all of that. So we'll have some real info to share with you. But then I look forward to all of us coming together in love. Eyes of Darkness. Okay, cool. The book Eyes of Darkness mentions Wuhan. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, that's one problem with doing all all my research by going up the Akashic Library and the Galactic Collective and the Etheric Surgeon Realm and all of that, that um, I forget to read actual real books. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, I'm going to decide on Monday, at least for April and May what I'm going to do about in-person versus um, live stream. But since a virus can be undetected for 20 days in a person before they show symptoms, that means that I feel like I don't want anyone to get hurt to see me. So odds are until we know everything is, I love you, I love you, Uma. I love you all. Oh my God, so much love. You guys like so much love. Uh, and I can't believe like I'm here in a mountain in Mexico and I get to share love with all of you. All right. So I'm going to call it at that. Once we hit lots of love all around, that's a good time um, to say goodbye. Linda, I'm sorry you just joined us, but join us Friday night. Uh, and uh, we have the link for it up in the uh, info for this. Love you guys. Keep healthy. Keep safe. And um, if anyone has any like natural, holistic, organic, uh, energetic techniques for protection from viruses, feel welcome on Friday night. Join us and share them. Let's come together as love. Get through this as love. Mwah! Bye.